Melissa here from Girl Gone Fishing and I am getting ready to head up to East Harbor State Park Campground for the Ohio Kayak Fishing East West and Middle Harbor Tournament. So this is a rare treat. It is Wednesday. I've taken off work so I'm gonna go up. I'll be up there um, this evening. I was supposed to be done this morning but I have been packing and mowing and working all day and I'm a mess. I'm a sweaty mess. So what I need to do is get a shower and then get in the car and head up there. Um, normally I would be freaking out because I'd have to be dealing with rush hour but maybe it won't be so bad on a Wednesday. Normally I do this on a Friday and having to drive up on Friday rush hour this late is awful. So I am really excited to get up there. I'm going to have all day Thursday and all day Friday to pre-fish and scout and with it being open to middle for the first time I'm going to see if I can find a way into there and see what that's like. And uh, I'm really excited for this weekend. Get to see my buddies. I haven't done a lot of camping yet this year so it's going to be a great weekend and uh, yeah I got to get going. I will see you guys up at the campground. Continue on East Harbor State Park for half a mile. Well, I found my campsite before the sun went down. It really helps that it's about my fifth time to this exact campsite. So it's kind of like home here at the park for me. So, all right, I got to stop delaying. That was a long drive and I have a lot of work. If you can see my tent is uh, in process. It's just lying in pieces out there. And then I decided to come in here and make a video instead. <laughs> I think the hardest part of this whole tent setup is figuring out where the front door of the rain fly is. Hey, good morning. Happy Thursday morning from East Harbor State Park. Here's my home away from home for the weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get going. I slept in a little bit because it was very loud at the campground all night. And I didn't want to start this day off with a total sleep deficit. So I slept through sunrise. It's already getting to be morning but beautiful morning. It's gonna be a really hot day today um, and the storm front's gonna blow through the cold front. So it's gonna be like 88 today, but it's gonna be like 19 mile per hour winds as this front blows through and then it's gonna be a little cooler tomorrow. So my plan for this morning was to find a good place to launch my boat into Middle Harbor. Now there's no official boat ramps, but I did a bunch of research online and it said that you can carry your boat into the lake. So I'm trying to find where people do that. Um, there's a couple spots like with parking uh, on the road, but it's real rocky and kind of like steep. So I feel like I could get down, uh, but I don't know how I'd get back up. And I don't think the rocks would be very good for my kayak. So I am out here bushwhacking, trying to find some other access for this little middle harbor. I don't know if you can see, that's it right there. I just have to figure out how to get a kayak in there. So this is kind of cool having all this extra time. I'm usually in a rush, 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 hurry. I never get to get what like eyes on something to make decisions. I have to make decisions like online. Oh no, there's a really big spider web ahead of me. Ooh. Okay, what do we have here? It's not really an ideal place anyway. Again, it's one of those places that I could get my kayak in with a shove, but I don't think I could get it out alone. But that's what I'm working on getting access to. It looks really cool. All right, strange barrier. Universe telling me that's not the spot. This looks promising. It's heading in the direction of the water at least. I don't think this is going to be a kayak launch sort of situation. Whoa. Well, this would be really cool if I was bank fishing but I don't think it helps me with my kayak needs. Oh, oh, look at that. There's water at the end of it. We've got another chance here. Well, at least it's not rocks and the water's really shallow. So I could probably stand there and shove the nose of the kayak up. Man, if I could do it without my fish finder, you know, the weight of the fish finder and the battery. But if I didn't have that, Ah, I'd just be fishing blind again on a new body of water. I'm trying to get away from that. Okay, I'm gonna take this trail as if I had just parked my car in that parking lot right there, brought my kayak across the road and onto the trail and down to the lake. So let's see what it's like. Look how deep this red is. My feet are just like buried in it. That is not kayak wheel friendly. 
So the way I pictured this day going was get launched on Middle Harbor with no problem, paddle around, find out that I can catch bass all over the lake, and uh, call it a day. So instead, I am wandering around East Harbor State Park like a lunatic talking to my phone. So now I'm parked in the first of two little pull-off parking areas along the park road and Middle Harbor. So that's Middle Harbor. And then there's the road to the main lake. But what I stopped to see is this. I think probably a lot of people slide their boats in right here. Um, but look at all those rocks down there, big pointy rocks. And this looks really hard to get up for me. I don't think I'd be able to pull my fully loaded kayak up that at all. I don't know. Okay, let's see what we got down this trail. Lake Erie Island's water trail access point. I need to look into that. Maybe that's something where there's like some kayak or paddling access points, you know, to these things that aren't like really well known. Well, this is promising. So this is another good possibility if I want to launch onto West Harbor. I just don't know that much about West Harbor. Um, I guess that's what pre-fishing's for, right? So it's super windy right now. We got white caps uh, out of there. So I'm going to come back tomorrow. Uh, the wind's gonna shift when a front pushes through tonight. Uh, it's gonna be much cooler tomorrow and the wind is gonna be totally the opposite direction. So what I need to do is now I have a list of like maybe five good options and tomorrow it's gonna storm in the morning and then clear up and so while it rains i'm going to drive around to each of my options and see what it's like with the wind in the new direction and then i'll pick one and i'll pre-fish and maybe that'll be the one for the tournament i had to pause my ramp hunt to refresh the ice in my cooler back at camp and look what jumped in my hand at the checkout Twix ice cream bar now with real ice cream i mean what was it before i don't care it's really good Oh, this is really cool. You can see Cedar Point over there. Good morning, happy Friday. Uh, today's another day of pre-fishing. Uh, my goal for today is get launched on Middle Harbor and check that out and then make the decision if I'm going to fish the tournament tomorrow on Middle Harbor or East Harbor. So I don't need to pre-fish East Harbor because I've been out there and uh, I think I'd hit all the same spots no matter what by the end of the tournament. So all right there are a lot of birds going on. They're happy it's Friday. Okay, second cast with the weightless Senko, and look what I got! So this is a really cool day for me because I don't get a lot of time to get out and pre-fish. You know, to be able to come up here early like this and have a whole day to like get out and explore and try to learn something, this is awesome. So I'm actually learning how to pre-fish while I pre-fish, if that makes sense. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people who go out and catch fish and pre-fishing. I think that seems really strange because don't you need those fish for the tournament the next day? So why would I want to catch a bunch of fish? So what I feel like it is, is try to find out a couple different things Things. I want to see what the water's like, what the lake's like, water clarity, water temp, and then I have to figure out where the fish are positioned. What's the pattern? Are they hiding in the, the deep part? I don't know if there is a deep part in here, but you know, hiding in the deep part, the shallows, are they close to shore? Are they out offshore on structure? Are they in current? Are they on wood? Are they on rock? Are they in grass? Are they in the grass on the edges? Is there a bite in the lily pads? You know, you have to get all this information and then you have to try to figure out like what lure are they biting? You know, are they are they doing a reaction bite? Are, do they like a frog here? Do they like a, a green pumpkin senko or a black and blue senko here? I don't know. I've never met these fish. Although I do, I heard heard it's connected to East Harbor, so maybe I have seen some of these fish because I've been on East Harbor before. But you get the idea. 
idea. I need to figure out this information. As much information as I can get today, I go into tomorrow with that knowledge base. It's stuff I don't have to figure out, maybe. Now, I do understand fish swim, patterns change, weather changes, all that stuff. So I get that it might not be perfect, but it's some information. I mean, for years, all I've done is shown up at these lakes with no preparation and no practice, never having been there before, pick a ramp on Google Earth, never having seen it, and just go. No electronics. I mean, it's just been nuts. And it's time for me to be more organized and be more prepared and be more professional. So that's what I'm working on today. And uh, yeah, I got to stop talking to the camera and start covering some water. <laughs> So I just realized I'm not seeing any grass on the graph. Um, in East Harbor, it's all grass and all the bite is about the grass edges, like finding out if they're in the grass, on top of the grass or on the edges of the grass. But I'm not seeing any grass right now. So this might want be one of those situations where you find the grass, you find the bass. It's interesting. We'll add that to our information database about this place and we'll see how it all adds up into a picture at the end. This is so cool. <laughs> I mean, plus, oh my gosh, look how pretty it is. So I'm not sure how long he is. I didn't bring a board today, but I would guess 18. Definitely a strong 17. No, I'm gonna go 18. So I think this is definitely where I'm fishing tomorrow. Look at this guy. Oh, he's beautiful. so close to the boat I really didn't have the thing to set the hook and then I realized I was pre-fishing and wasn't supposed to set the hook anyway but wow that was a nice fish he was 14 or 15 inches is but he's at least an inch longer than the last one all right guy you're going back don't tell your friends wow this is probably a huge waste of time but I need to go back there I never let myself do this in tournaments because I always say I don't want to waste tournament time like you know playing around and exploring but this is pre-fishing so I'm going to dedicate a half hour to going and playing around and exploring back in the shallows with my frog. <laughs> of the day. He's probably about 
uh, 14 inches. Got some gnarly sores there on the tail. Look how pale he is. I don't know if that means he doesn't feel well or he's been under the cover of something, but there's not much out here. Just a little bit of grass, like, you know, sporadic grass and about two feet of water. So, all right, well, cool chatterbait bite. Unbelievable. This might be the most fun day of fishing of my entire life and I'm not even supposed to be fishing. Check out this frogfish. I'm back here in about eight inches of water. I threw up into even more shallow. Look at this. I've got braid on. It's gin clear water. There's no wind. And look at this. Wow. I can see now why people get their hopes up after a good pre-fish and then are let down if they don't bite on tournament day because everything has been working today and the tournament's tomorrow and if I come back here and I can't catch any fish tomorrow, I'm going to feel so much worse than when I usually don't catch any fish. But I'm being very disciplined. If I catch a fish, I leave the area. I make a mark. I mark what I caught it on, what the conditions were, and then I move to a different area. And I keep making myself just change techniques, trying different things, and they all just keep working. So definitely coming here tomorrow, and oh, I hope it fishes somewhat like it does today. Look at that healthy chunk. Wow. So he's number five, long and skinny. I'm guessing 15 inches. He might be 16. I'm not sure. But either way, really good limit. So thank you, buddy. And uh, going to keep moving and exploring. So by the rules of this club and most of kayak fishing, I'm allowed to go anywhere within the boundaries of the tournament that I can float my kayak. I'm not allowed to get out and pull it or push it, anything like that. But what I can do on my links, it has a very shallow draft because it doesn't have like a hull like this, like a V, a keel. It doesn't have a keel. So I pull my pedals and put my rudder up and then I use my paddle like a stand-up paddle board and I can push myself in like an inch of water. So what I'm doing is I'm standing farther up on the front of the board because all my weight's in the back with my battery and my seat and my tackle. So I'm trying to stand up as far as I can on the front of the board and balance it out and then just pushing as hard as I can and that's getting it over this little, there's just this little bridge like a, there's just this little earth bridge right here and there's a stick in the water and so you got to push over the earth bridge and the stick just in like one inch of water but I can do it. Well, I made it back to the car and got everything loaded up and I started thinking today really deserves to stand alone as its own video. I was going to put it all together with the whole weekend trip, you know, driving up, the pre-fishing, the camping, the tournament, all that stuff. But today was such a spectacular day of fishing. I mean, I caught so many fish. It deserves to be its own video and hopefully tomorrow is going to be amazing and that deserves to be its own video. So. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up and say, I owe Brian at Strictly Sailing Kayak a huge thank you for helping me get my setup working for this weekend. Um, he got me a battery I needed to get my GoPro and my Garmin functioning. So I hopefully got good footage of these giant fish and I got to map the lake, so that was really cool. 
today was really amazing. Uh, I don't get a lot of chance to pre-fish, only a couple times before this, and I really just wanted to get out and try to figure out what the fish were doing. Are they holding on the inside of the lily pads, the outside, is there grass in this lake? How deep is it? Are they on wood? Are they on the shore? Are they on the middle? The answer is yes. Yes, they were everywhere. Yes, they bit everything. I caught fish on a weightless Senko, a weightless Fluke, a frog, a chatterbait, and a spinnerbait. <laughs> so I caught fish at the shore, in the middle, in the lily pads, in the grass, and out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. So this was a spectacular day, um, one I will not forget in a long time, and I really, really hope that tournament day tomorrow uh, brings me the same luck, and I can find the fish again, and I get my first trophy. That's the goal. I really want my first trophy this year, and I feel like this is probably the best chance I'm going to have all year. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm going to see you out in the water in the next one, which happens to be tomorrow.